What's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. I know it's been way too long since I've up uploaded anything, but I just checked and we actually hit 10,000 subscribers, which was one of my kind of original goals back in, I think like 2017. I was like, if I could ever get to 10K, that would be phenomenal. So thanks for everyone who uh, made that happen. And who knows, I haven't posted in such a long time. I might upload this and people are, people are gonna be like, why in the world am I still subscribed to this guy? And we might drop under 10K, but that's cool. Um, so I want to throw an update out there. Where have I been? Um, it's been a long kind of year. Um, I mean, you guys all know how COVID is affecting almost everything uh, still, even today. So I've been doing a lot of just uh, working out. doing a lot of dentistry trying to get my requirements done um, I actually got engaged not too long ago I have a wedding coming up in a couple months so super busy with um, planning that I actually didn't uh, get into, well, I didn't match into oral surgery, which you guys know I've been, um, ever since I started dental school, even before I started dental school, I know I wanted to do oral surgery. And in a little bit, I'm gonna break that down, kind of why I didn't match and um, what my plans are for the next year to get my resume even better so that hopefully next cycle I can match. I'm actually gonna post a video um, next week, so this isn't just like a one and done. Uh, Monday morning, I'm leaving on something that we call the Ohio Project here at OSU, where I actually go work out in a real private practice office. It's about two hours away from uh, Columbus in Fremont, and I just get to kind of escape the whole school uh, work environment. I'm in, a, I'm in a real private practice office, I get patients, I'm gonna see more than two a day, which is the max that we can see at school. So I think this is gonna be a really eye-opening um, kind of eye-opening week for myself to see the big difference between how dentistry runs in school, which is obviously super slow. You know, we have to get checks almost every single step of the way, depending on what faculty we're working with. So. You know, I, I bring the patient in, sit them down, I check their vitals, um, go check in with the teacher. I uh, look at the x-rays, go check in with the teacher. I start the prep, go check in with the teachers. Fill it, go check in with the teachers. Adjust occlusion, go check in with the teachers. And then uh, I get final swipes from the teachers before I can even let that patient go. So it takes like a uh, 40, 30 to 45 minute procedure potentially and then turns that into you know a two three hour ordeal because you go and try to get that uh, get your faculty to come look at stuff but they're helping three other students so you got to get in line anyways it's a big long mess so the rest uh, the rest of this week and or this upcoming week and the week after that I'm gonna be Monday through Thursday at that private practice office I'm gonna try to record some stuff obviously I can't record in there but uh, I'll get uh, I'll get my take on it and kind of keep you guys updated. So that's a cool new video to look out for. Other than that, um, the rest of the few months, I mean, I graduate in, let's see, it's February, March, April, May. So I graduate in three months, which is super scary. The rest of this video is gonna be talking about what I'm doing next year to hopefully get into oral surgery, like I said, next cycle. All right, let's talk about one of the biggest updates in my life is this year, this, uh, this cycle to get into oral surgery residency. I did not match and you know if you guys have been watching my any of my videos back from you know 2017 before I even got into dental school I knew that I wanted to do oral surgery so that had been my goal ever since I took my anatomy class in undergrad right so this has been um, something I've been working towards for years and years and I uh, you know during dental school I applied myself as much as I possibly could, I felt like I had um, a good, uh, good stats. Right, I had like a, a, almost a three nine GPA, um, top five percent um, in my class. 
I had a really good uh, CBSC score that, well, I thought it was really good, um, made me competitive. It's not like I'm not breaking records. I'm not the smartest kid that, that uh, some of these residencies are going to interview, but I definitely had a competitive score in my mind. And so looking back, this is really stupid on my part. I didn't even think that um, not matching was even a possibility. I applied to um, 13 schools. Out of that 13, I got I received six interviews. And um, so kind of the way it works is any school that I interview at, um, they rank me amongst all the applicants. I rank them um, in a list, you know, one through six, and it gets plugged into a computer software program algorithm and then it spits out who matches where and hope and uh, supposedly the way it all works it's supposed to benefit the the candidates so the the interviewees right and um, match day comes around this was a couple weeks ago I uh, open up that email super pumped super excited to see where I was gonna be spending the next four years and I didn't I didn't match. Uh, it said, unfortunately, we have to inform you that you did not match to oral surgery this year. And um, when I read that, man, it felt like everything, all this hard work I've been putting in for years was was for nothing. Um, it was definitely hard. Probably one of the harder uh, rejections I've ever received in, in my entire life. Like I, I had put everything you guys know, like all the videos I've made, um, going starting in D1 all the way up till now my sole focus was doing well and um, in the classroom and kind of getting my hand skills ready as much as I could to um, get into residency so when that didn't happen needless to say I needed uh, a solid hour to kind of just process what what happened and um, figure out what I was gonna do so once I got over my little pity party, um, I realized that because I didn't match, I need to do an intern year, which is what um, if you don't if you don't match into residency right out of dental school, um, this is the best thing you can do for your resume to be able to apply again next cycle. So I will go spend a year at um, an oral surgery program and be able to kind of learn the ins and outs of, uh, of the profession. I'll basically be almost like a, a pseudo resident that doesn't have uh, all of the responsibilities that a natural resident has. So I'll be spending time in, uh, in the OR, helping with any cases that come in. So, you know, that's like um, jaw surgery, uh, TMJ surgery, um, it can be trauma, uh, cleft palates, uh, any, anything that happens in the OR, I can be there to help. Or I can also, if, it, if the program I'm in, the residency program I'm, uh, I'm at is a, connected to a dental school, I can be helping the dental students um, learn how to extract teeth a little bit better. So it's going to be a really, really busy year. Um, from what I've heard uh, kind of around town about how, like what, what a normal schedule is, it's depending on the program, obviously, but you know, I'll be getting to the hospital 6.30, start rounding on patients, and then that it kind of depends on if I'm in the student clinics, you know, I go over there, start getting their patients, uh, or start helping them with their patients, or if I'm in the OR, or, or if I'm on call, you know, getting busy, getting my hands dirty, helping the residents uh, get through their day. Probably that lasts all the way till 5, 5.36, depending on the program that I'm at. And then if I have a call, you know, overnight call goes from uh, when everyone leaves. So usually about six or seven all the way till six or seven that next morning. Um, and that's just handling any trauma, any accidents so that can be, you know, like gunshot wounds, lacerations, um, any uh, car accidents, um, like anything that, ha ha that has to do with the face um, that an oral surgeon needs to be there for, I'll probably... Um, be there helping out if it's something like a low-grade uh, infection of a tooth that's probably something I can handle on my own as an intern and then you know some of these bigger accidents I, I'll definitely be calling in some of the upper level re residents to, to help out so basically this this whole next year is going to be just a, a an amazing learning process for me it's gonna get me acclimated to what uh, oral surgery is so that when I start residency, hopefully um, <clears throat> the year after that, so that'll be what, 2022, um, I can 
hit the ground running and hopefully this will look good enough on my application so that when I apply I will be able to match uh, match at a, at a great program but anyways all that being said I was fortunate enough to uh, get a spot at VCU and kind of the way it all went down was actually really wild so I, I told you I, re I read that email had a pity party for like an hour and then I had to just send out mass emails to all the places that I applied to hopefully get an intern spot and I, I, had, I hadn't really talked to any faculty about how I do this um, and so I quickly shot all of them emails trying to get them to you know give me pointers on how to secure a spot because if I if I was left without a spot if all the spot all the intern spots filled up I and I didn't get one for the next year I was gonna be out of luck like I would have probably had to go work in private practice somewhere and that doesn't look as good on a resume so it kind of waste that whole year um, anyways I get I get all those emails sent out and then I kind of just start I, I sit there and wait and I and slowly I start getting responses and I start having zoom interviews with all these different programs and some of them you know I was uh, I got offered a spot in Nashville that I was really excited for but they told me I had to uh, decline or accept within 12 hours and I was still interviewing for like the VCU spot which I like that was kind of my number one because I knew how good of a program it was anyways I was trying to um, figure out what to do I uh, it was chaos that's like the only thing I can say and uh, luckily it all worked out that I was able to uh, receive an offer from from VCU and I, I can't be more excited so for the next year starting I think July 1st I gotta move in a couple months actually I will be uh, I'll be in Richmond Virginia which I I'm super excited for I haven't lived that far east in a while you guys know I'm from Florida so it'll be nice to go a little bit farther south there's a ton of snow uh, outside my window right now. Hopefully it'll be a little bit warmer there. But anyways, I hope I can keep you guys updated on kind of how an intern, uh, how an intern year is for oral surgery for everyone interested in uh, maybe specializing. This kind of shed some light on that. You guys can kind of learn from my mistakes. Um, don't be overconfident when it comes to match. And if you don't match, understanding that your next year is just going to be it's so important to um, take that year to learn as much as possible so when you do match hopefully that next cycle you'll be ready to go and um, farther ahead of the game than you would have been if you just went straight out of um, straight out of dental school into residency so those are my uh, big updates for where I've been for the past couple months sorry I haven't uh, haven't been able to make more videos but if you guys have any questions or uh, video ideas that you guys want me to cover throw them down in the comments below I need to start pumping out more videos keeping you guys up to date with how uh, school is finishing up and then hopefully keep going into this next phase uh, of my career the intern year at VCU thanks for watching everyone and I will see y'all in the next one